Well, hello everybody and welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Peter Traklic. In this video tutorial I'm gonna show you how you can take advantage of the child of constraint and the copy location constraint in Blender so you can animate this robotic arm that, as you can see here, grabs the spear, it it lifts the sphere from one table and it moves, moves the sphere to another table and then it leaves the sphere there. I want to tell you here that animating a robotic arm is a typical, classical example of a beginner animator's uh, you know, exercise. It's after all much easier to animate a robotic arm than a human arm. Okay? But for our tutorial, I want to show you how you can get this result through using the constraints functionality. So, now I want to stop the animation and I want to select my sphere and I want to show you, if I head over to the constraints context button over here, you can see that I have added to my sphere uh, two different constraints. Okay, so I'm going to delete the constraints and the keyframes of the constraints and I'm going to start all the way from the start so you can see how you can get this result. Alright. Now, having selected my sphere, I'm heading over to the context button for the constraints over here and I want to add to my sphere two constraints. The one is going to be the child of constraint. Okay, and the, the other constraint is going to be the copy location constraint. Okay, now as you can see, those two constraints require the input of target objects. So we have fields here that in which we have to add a target object for our constraint. So for the first constraint, child of constraint, as a target object, I am setting the hand object which is this object over here okay so the hand object here now if I go over here to the outliner you can see that I have an armature to my scene which for the moment is hidden so let me click on this little eye icon over here and I want to reveal the armature here okay and if I click on this little plus icon on the left you can see that the hand is a child node inside the hierarchy of the armature here. Simply because I have parented the hand object to this little bone over here of the armature. Okay, let me now hide the, the rig really quick by clicking on this little eye icon over here and I want to continue to, with setting up uh, our animation. So, I, once I've added the child of constraint to my sphere and I've added a, I, I, once I added a, the hand object, let me, let me clear this field and let me do it again. So I'm adding the target object to be the hand object and you can see instantly the sphere has shifted in space. We have a shift in the, loca in the location of the sphere in space. Why? Because now the sphere is copying the transformations of the uh, of the target object. So please have that in mind. It's time you add a child of constraint that connects, that links an object to another object. The owner of the constraint, which in our case is the sphere, is going to copy instantly the transformation of the target object. So this is something you might not want to happen because it might lead you to some unwanted results. So if you don't want this to happen, you need to click inside this panel of the constraint, the set inverse button. So what this button does is, you can think of that as being a corrective button of some sort. It resets the location of the sphere to its original uh, you know, position. Now, if for any reason you don't want to to reset the location, you have the clear inverse button, which uh, just cancels this out and places the sphere uh, to its new position. Alright, just have this in mind. So, now, 
let me click on this setting verse button and you, you, you're going to see that it might need to click on this button uh, more than once as I'm going to show you in just a while. So now, if I play back the animation, you can see that for, for the fir very first moment of my animation, the sphere is being constrained to follow the, the movement of the hand object, which of course is something we don't want to happen, right? So that's why we need to add some keyframes to the child of constraints influence slider here. So let me go to the first frame of my animation and of course now for this frame I want to set the influence of the, of the child of constraint all the way down to zero. So scrap the slider, the influence slider here, all the way to the left and we need for this to be zero for the moment. But as I'm moving in my animation, moving forward, you can see that somewhere here, let me switch over to the top view so you can better see what's going on here. Somewhere here, at the frame exactly 52, the robotic arm is grabbing the sphere. So I need to keyframe here the influence slider of the child of constraint all the way up to one. But before that, I need to move one frame backwards. So I'm moving to the frame 52 and I'm setting the 80 frame here for the influence to zero. So insert the frame here. So I am one frame before, I have added 80 frame, influence zero. Now I'm moving one frame forward to the frame 53 and now I'm setting the influence all the way up to one. And of course, I want to add yet another keyframe for this change. Now, as you can see, again, we have the same problem. The sphere has been shifted uh, in space, has changed location. So that's why we need to click once more the set inverse button. Now, everything is going to be OK. Now, let me play back the animation for those first frames here. So you can see the robotic arm is grabbing the sphere. And from this moment on, the sphere is copying the transformations of the target object, which is the hand object. So that's why here I have added this little rotation around the axis of the, uh, of the hand object. So you can see that even the rotations or the scale uh, are being copied. Here you have a matrix of uh, location, rotation, scale, uh, X, Y, Z uh, buttons. So by Clicking on those buttons here and activating or deactivating those uh, location rotation scale here, you can customize the way the child of constraint is going to affect the owner of the constraint, the sphere in our case. So for example here I don't want the scale, I don't want for my sphere to copy the scale of the hand object. So I can, if I want it, I can deactivate the scale for the x, y and z axis. So let me continue with setting up the animation. So now the robotic arm is getting somewhere here. You can see, let me switch to the side view. Now it's going to place the sphere onto the other table. All right, somewhere here. So let me switch to the top view. And if I move a little bit forward in the timeline, you can see that now, at this keyframe, 150, the robot car is leaving the sphere. So somewhere here, I want for my child of constraint to stop uh, having influence of my sphere. So I want to bring the influence all the way down to zero. I need for the robot car to leave the, the, the sphere on the, on the table. Before that, I need to go one frame backwards to the frame 1049 and as you can see here the influence is maximum, is one. I want to keyframe this, so right click, insert keyframe. Now I'm clicking on the right arrow of my keyboard and I'm moving one frame forward to the frame 150. Now I want to set the influence all the way down to zero because I don't want for my robotic arm to keep carrying the sphere. So I'm setting the uh, yet another keyframe here of 
zero influence. So now the robotic arm does not uh, affect the sphere whatsoever. But you can see we have a now wanted result. The sphere, if I play back the animation, the sphere now has returned to its initial position, which of course is something we don't want to happen. We need to find some way, somehow we need to make the sphere to stay here. So I want exactly at this frame to select my sphere and I want to bring the cursor to the selected by clicking Shift S, cursor to selected, and I want to add an empty to my scene which is going to have the visualization of a sphere. So I'm selecting this empty over here in the outliner and I'm giving it the name empty still. A descri descriptive name, if you prefer. Alright, now I want to give it some more size to the empty so I, you can see what's going on here. And I want to make this empty to be the target object for the copy location constraint of my sphere. So I am setting this empty still object as the target object for my copy location constraint. But now, if I play back the animation, you can see that the sphere doesn't move. All right, and the reason for that is that because the copy location constraint has an influence of one, a maximum influence that overrides the influence of the child of constraint. So I need to keyframe the influence of the copy location constraint as well. So I'm heading over to my previous keyframe at the frame 52, and I want for the influence of the copy location constraint here to be zero. So I'm setting the slider all the way to the left. So now I'm adding a keyframe here for the copy location constraint. You can see the sphere has returned to uh, where it should be. Now I need for the copy location constraint to start having an influence on my sphere just after the frame one, 149. So I want for my copy location constraint, look at that, at exactly at the frame 150 to have an influence of 1. Alright, so I need to keyframe the influence of 1 here, but before that I need to go one frame back and I want to keyframe the zero influence once more. Why? Because you want to have an instant transition between the state of zero influence to the state of maximum influence for the copy location constraint. So I'm moving one frame forward and here I want to set the influence of the copy location constraint all the way to the right, the slider I mean, and the influence to its maximum value. I want of course to keyframe it once more. So add yet another keyframe here. Now if I play back the animation, you can see that I have here my robotic arm, let me zoom in a little bit, okay, that grabs the sphere here, take a look at the influence sliders, copy location influence, zero for the moment, we don't want the sphere to be over, over here, we want to stay here on this table. Also notice that the influence of the child of constraint is still zero, no influence for the moment. Now, at this frame here, the influence of the uh, the influence of the child of constraint becomes maximum. So now the robotic arm can lift off lift off the the sphere into the air and take it with it. Whereas the copy location constraint still has a zero influence. Okay. Because if I now grab the slider influence for, this, for the copy location constraint, you can see we will have something like that, which of course we don't want to happen. So let me bring this all the way back to zero. So now, moving forward, now the robotic arm uh, car is carrying the sphere. It places the sphere somewhere here. Let me zoom in. And at the next frame of our animation, at the frame 150, the child of constraint has a zero influence, whereas one frame, just one frame before, it had, it had a 
influence of one at maximum influence and the copy location constraint had a zero influence. One frame after the influence of the child dog has become zero and the influence of the, uh, of the copy location has become one. So I can show you more clearly the transition between the two constraints if I bring up a graph editor window and there you are going to see that if I select the influence of child off here and the influence of copy location and I want to zoom in so I can show you what's going on here you, we are at the frame 150 right you can see we have here kind of cross fade effect the one constraint is uh, you know is fading out and the other constraint the copy location is fading in and this happens in one keyframe just one keyframe so we have an instant uh, you know transition between the one constraint and the other okay so this is the child of constraint the green one and the blue one is the copy location constraint all right so let me close this window really quick and now i can move forward with my animation the sphere stays on the table and the robotic arm is uh, completing its cycle of movement whatever so now if i play back the animation you can see from this angle here better from this camera the result of the effect of the two constraints the child of and the cop location constraint uh, on the sphere and on our animation. So I hope I have shown you that by combining in a smart way two or more constraints like the child of and the cop location constraints in our example you can get some very very interesting uh, results with a minimal effort. So that concludes our tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something from it. So if you like this tutorial don't forget to subscribe. See you next time with a hopefully interesting topic. Hopefully soon. Until then, have fun and goodbye.